Hey everybody, welcome back to Thursday's Theology. My name is Jeff and I'm your host. Along with my producer Tom, we want to thank you for joining us this week. Welcome to our second video on prayer. Uh, if you missed the last week's episode and you want to catch up, click on the link down below uh, just to see what we were talking about last week. Uh, one thing I that I mentioned in the, um, in the intro video that I wanted to kind of bring back up uh, is that I'm a historian by training, so that actually really influences the way that I read the Bible. Because in history, um, I'm really, really taught how to read contextually and analytically. So when that translates to reading the Bible, um, I read it very contextually and very... Um, sorry, what's Drake saying? Um, very contextually and very analytically, where it actually helps in my reading of the Bible because the Bible is a contextual book and it was written in a historical time frame. So it's helpful to understand the context and analyze it uh, accordingly. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention that because uh, whenever we, I use a passage from the Bible, um, I'm try, gonna try my hardest to provide the context uh, surrounding that, uh, that particular passage. Uh, so today we are going to continue our discussion on prayer by examining one of the more famous prayers in the Bible, and that's called the, the Lord's Prayer. Uh, but before we dive into it, let's revisit the question we talked about last week. And the question that we're uh, talking about is why what is prayer and why is it important and uh, the reason why we're tackling it in in that manner is is that um, we we need to understand that prayer is an important thing um, oh yeah sorry I forgot how to do this um, prayer is an important thing for um, building and sustaining our relationship with God as well as uh, just growing in our own understanding of ourselves and our understanding of who God is. So when we talk about prayer, we're approaching it from the standpoint of it is important. It is something to, to be um, serious about and talk about. And uh, yeah, so that's why we're talking about it in the way that we are. Um, so let's see, where's this other thing? There's one of them. Oh, it's enough here. Um, so yeah, uh, that's the main question we're going to be answering the next couple of weeks is uh, what is prayer and why is it important? So um, last week we talked about prayer as being relational, and I just wanted to revisit that because that is one of the more important aspects of prayer, and that is it, it's a relational tool uh, that we use to strengthen our relationship with God. So if Again, if we're talking to our best friend, then chances are our relationship is going to grow and flourish. Uh, if we stop all the prayer, or if we stop all communication with our friends, then that relationship's not going to grow. That relationship's not going to be uh, a fruitful one. So just like in our relationship with God, we need to treat um, prayer as a conversational, relational tool as we're growing and developing in our understanding and uh, relationship with, with who God is. So we can't expect the relationship to grow if there's nothing but silence. So uh, let's get into this week's topic. Uh, the Lord's Prayer itself is found, let's see if this is the right order, one, two, three, yep. Um, the Lord's Prayer is found in the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke. Now both, both of these guys were followers of Jesus and they wrote their separate accounts of Jesus's life and ministry. Uh, Luke was um, a kind of a smart guy um and it can you can tell by the way he wrote his his the greek that he used to write his gospel account is very very polished very very um well spoken and uh matthew on the other hand is uh, a tax collector he's he's a jewish guy um but he's writing to a very jewish audience so his his greek you can often see him saying like oh this is what this means in in hebrew because he's translating Jewish customs into a Greek understanding. Um, so we're going to, for this video, we're going to use Matthew's account of the Lord's Prayer. Now the context of the Lord's Prayer is that, uh, ooh, things are opening up. Always got to love it when you unlock something, right? Uh, the context of the Lord's Prayer is that it, it's uh, in the middle of what's called the Sermon on the Mount. Now the Sermon on the Mount is a series of teachings that Jesus, uh, that have come become foundational for the Christian church. Jesus takes this long uh, chunk of, of time to teach various things uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, prayer being one of them. 
Um, we're going to go over the full context of the Sermon on the Mount in a future episode, but the Lord's Prayer comes out of uh, the teaching of the Sermon on the Mount. So the Lord's Prayer comes from instructions that Jesus is giving to the crowd on how to pray. So let's look at it line by line, and uh, let's look again, look at how the Gospel of Matthew uh, records it. So the first line is, uh, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So, oh, that was actually convenient. Um, I fell in water. How's that? It doesn't make any sense to me. Anyway, our father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So I actually had to look up what hallowed means because I've, I've actually said it, uh, hundreds of times as, as I've grown up doing the Lord's prayer, but I actually didn't really know what it meant. So when I looked it up, the, the dictionary definition of hallowed it means to honor as holy or to consider sacred. So what we notice about what's going on in the Lord's Prayer here is, is that it's addressed to our Heavenly Father. So it's addressed to, oops, that was not planned. Um, so it's addressed to our Father in Heaven. So we know that, dang it, I thought that was a ladder. <laughs> oops. Um, so it's addressed to, to God um, and it's, addressed to God as the Father and hallowed be thy name. So we have to, to view God as as a hallowed person, as, as a person, as an entity considered sacred. Okay? So that's important to understand it because just like in any prayer, it has to be addressed to the people that it that you know you're praying to. So in this case it's to our Heavenly Father and we're revering his name as sacred and holy. Um, all right, so the second line is, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, Jesus is claiming that heaven is a place where God's kingdom and will are the reality. It is a place where God's will is being done and God's kingdom is present and active. So, for us to understand this, uh, we are praying for that reality, for the heavenly reality, to become the earthly reality now your kingdom come your will be done jesus is making that statement that heaven is a place where that is already being done so we're asking that that also be done here on earth so again just to reiterate we're asking that the heavenly reality become the earthly reality so then we get to this line give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgive those have forgiven our debtors so I'll get into that in just a second. I need to figure out what's going on here. Am I supposed to go down? Like, I don't understand. I think that's like the third or fourth time I've died. <laughs> okay, let's see here. What do I, I need to get down there, right? Nope, that didn't work. <laughs> okay, maybe maybe I should follow the hint. Let's see. Oh, what? That's... That was stupid. That was lame. <laughs> wow. I feel... I feel not very smart. Um, ooh, what are these things? Okay, I think I need to push this thing. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Puzzles. Um, okay, so give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. Uh, I think the reason why Jesus says this is that we should be praying for this for, for this as it addresses our daily realities. So in, in other words, we are praying, uh, give us this day our daily bread, because it's a recognition that we are asking God to provide for our daily needs. Um, our daily bread is a reminder that we need to be completely relying upon God every single day. And I know that we can, you know, buy groceries and plan out our meals and, and stuff like that, but I don't think that's the point. I think the point is uh, remembering that we need to call upon God for our sustained daily um, sustenance. Whether or not we're able to... Uh... Okay, here we go. 
Um, whether or not that means we're, you know, planning out our meals or, or buying a lot of things to store into our, in our freezers or whatever, it, that's not the point. The point is that we're understanding that it's only because of God's rely, uh, relying upon God that we're able to sustain ourselves on a day-to-day basis. So the, now this is also, a kind of a strange one to get into as well, where it's forgive us our debts as we forgive those, who, uh, forgive our debtors. Um, the words... The word debt and debtors can also be um, trans translated and interchangeable with the words trespasses, trespassers, sin, and sins. Now, um, basically what the word sin means is doing wrong or evil against God or somebody else. So when we say, forgive us our debts as we forgive those who debt against us, um, we're asking God to forgive us as we are already forgiving other people. Now, this is an interesting point because uh, when we when we talk about forgiving others, we have to understand that it's because, or at least as Jesus is saying, it should be because we are forgiving those who sin against us. So God should forgive us our sins because we are forgiving those who sin against us. So the the understanding then, I'll stand back a little bit. The understanding is is that we are forgiving others and that is the only time that we can ask for forgiveness from god in fact um just after this passage in verses 14 and 15 jesus has this to say and he says for if you forgive other people when they sin against you your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not forgive others their sin your father will not forgive your sins so basically what jesus is saying is that in order to have god forgive our sins we have to be forgiving others when they have done something wrong against us and this is our daily reality there are so many things that I can recount uh, time and time again about how people have wronged me. But um, if I'm listening to Jesus and understanding Jesus correctly, that means I have to be willing to forgive them um, if I'm going to be forgiven of my sins. So it's not just a matter of saying, like, oh, God, please forgive me. Um, I'm still going to feel, like, really, really um, angry against, oh, crap, I forgot. I hate when the camera changes. Um, oops. Um, that means when when people uh, sin against me, if I'm going to be forgiven of my sins, I have to extend that same grace to, to others. So our reality is that people sin against us all the time. But in order to have our, uh, our sins forgiven by God, we have to be forgiving of others. Uh, so then the, the last line... Uh, of the Lord's Prayer is, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Um, And this is another interesting uh, point of the prayer, because basically temptation, again, is a daily reality of ours, whether it's looking at somebody lustfully or wishing that somebody, whoop, forgot I was running, uh, or wishing ill of somebody. uh, It doesn't really matter, but it, it, what it means is, is that our we are so tempted to be angry at people at to to look at them lustfully we're we're tempted every single day to to do wrong in the eyes of others and in the eyes of god so by praying this again it's addressing our daily reality of please don't lead us into temptation but deliver us from that evil so this is uh really really convicting of me because i i hate bad driving i absolutely hate 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 bad driving because if i'm driving and somebody cuts me off or is going too slow i automatically think oh you shouldn't be on the road you're a terrible driver blah 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 so i'm already wishing uh harm upon them because i'm like oh you shouldn't be on the road i hope your car gets a flat tire and you just get off uh the road um so there's lots of times where it's affected me too so what i think jesus is saying uh is that we should be asking god to deliver us from evil and temptation on a daily basis So let's uh, zoom back out for a second. Uh, The Lord's Prayer is Jesus' way of showing us how to pray to God for our daily realities. Our daily prayer should be, one, asking for the heavenly reality to become the earthly reality. Two, that our daily needs are met, including food. Three, that we are forgiven of our wrongdoings. Remember, as we are forgiving others. And four, and that we are delivered from evil evil and temptation. So I want to be clear and point out that the Lord's Prayer is a way of relying upon God daily, but it should add to what we are already praying and not become the only thing we pray. And what I mean by that 
is is that there is uh, so many times where people have said like, oh, just say this formulaic prayer and you'll you'll be good. Um, I don't think that's what's going on here. I think what's the the importance behind the Lord's prayer is is that it should be supplemental to what you are already praying for uh, yourself in your life. Because if you're just praying for your daily bread and you have a loved one that's that's sick and you're not praying for that, that's asking the Lord for, for your daily bread isn't going to address what is most on your heart. The thing that is most on your heart is that your loved one get healed and, and be better and, and be uh, raised from their sickness. So if that's what's at the heart of your prayer, pray that. The Lord's Prayer should just be something that you add into your rhythm of prayer. So I think that uh, so many times it can become just a formula or a magic incantation or prayer that people just say and like, okay, I'm good, but it, it's completely misunderstanding the point. Um, so it should add to what you're already praying, not become the only thing. So in everything that we pray, uh, we need to remember that we are addressing it to our God who is in heaven, whose name is sacred and worthy of praise. So uh, that's uh, actually where we're going to end this week's discussion on the Lord's Prayer. Now, I want to make sh make it clear that I was not able to do nearly enough justice to the Lord's Prayer. Uh, there have been volumes and volumes of, of theology books written about the Lord's Prayer, uh, just addressing what it means, uh, what Jesus is, is saying, everything that um, that it is, how it's subversive, you know, everything. Oh, look, I found a silver turtle. That's cool. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's... Yeah, <laughs> I think that's, uh, I, I cannot do it justice in just one episode. Uh, but that's, again, that's where the comment section comes into play. Because if you have questions, if something didn't make sense, or if you need clarification on anything that I said, please feel free to ask. I'm, I'm willing to, to converse with you. I, I want to have dialogue because it's only when we start talking with one another that we're able to understand theology a little bit better. Um, so, again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments below. Uh so it's now it's time again for the segment we like to call the obscure Bible verse of the week. And just to remind you, there's going to be no context given because the point is to show that if you read the Bible out of context, then it sometimes makes no sense at all. So this week's verse is Genesis 15, 9, which says, So the Lord said to me, Bring me a heifer, a goat and a ram, each three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Out of context, it sounds like God is planning one heck of a barbecue. Other than that, thanks for joining us this week for Thursday's Theology. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, join us next week for our third episode on prayer. We'll be talking about the whole issue of thoughts and prayers and how it sounds very hollow whenever we hear it. Uh, thanks again for watching, and if you like what we are doing here, make sure to subscribe to our channel. If you would like to be awesome and help us out, make sure you share this video with your friends and family. The more people we bring into the conversation, the better. Uh, we'll see you next week for the next installment of Thursday's Theology. And remember, theology doesn't have to be complicated. It is simply the study of who God is.